let's start lecture 31 and the course is corrosion protection methods in the last lecture we started discussing about uh, uh, we started discussing uh, uh, polarization and associated cathodic protection and in fact we saw that if we can uh, take the potential down for single redox process then i can actually reduce the anodic current density and anodic current density is nothing but the rate of dissolution of metal in the form of ions. So, what we did we actually started talking about uh, polarization and we are specially talking about cathodic polarization. and reducing Ia or rate of dissolution. Okay. So, that is possible if we can if we send electron to the metal and this actually enhances the rate of cathodic reaction. Enhances and that actually reduces I A. So, this was done like this if I if we recall. So, this corresponds to every term has its own meaning. Please go back to previous lecture and then get to know this. Now, we are at this location which is exchange current density I 0 and E equilibrium and that time this value is 0, over voltage is 0 and this corresponds to I A and this corresponds to I C. So, as we have seen that if we can go down in the potential range, so this is E prime and I could see that the I A if at it if this particular metal maintains the equilibrium and stays at this position. If we can send negative current or electron to the metal definitely the potential will drop and the I A we will reach here. So, that I A is less than I 0. Okay. So, at I 0 both I, I at I 0 I A equal to I C equal to I 0. So, that means this I A which is let us say prime is less than the I O I A what it was to be had it maintained equilibrium fine. So, I could see that if we do cathodic polarization I can reduce the rate of dissolution or reduce the or decrease or reduce the current current density corresponding to anodic process. Now, actual corrosion process So, this is applicable to single redox process. So, this redox process where only m species is there of course, m ion, m n plus ion and m. So, that is the only that those are the two things and these are basically same species actually which is the metal. Now, actual corrosion process it actually handles minimum two processes and those two processes will be handling two different species. Let us say hydrogen see this uh, zinc dissolution in pure HCl let us say temperature pressure fixed and let us say for the time being let us consider this is closed system. Now, 
closed system. So, now if we allow this particular process to happen, we immediately will see zinc on top of zinc hydrogen bubble will see will form. So, and then zinc gradually goes into the solution. So, we will have this reaction. And if we break into electrochemical processes, so this is anodic, this is cathodic. Now you see we have two different reactions. Here we had different reactions cathodic and anodic reactions, but involving the same species, but here we are involving two different species. Now, since it is a closed system and this is at a particular temperature pressure, this will reach equilibrium, but actual corrosion system does not maintain equilibrium, this is open system and hydrogen is a gas and that hydrogen gas has that ability to go out of the system. And if hydrogen gas goes out of the system and in order to maintain equilibrium, because if you fix temperature, then definitely this particular system would like to go to the equilibrium. So, in order to maintain that equilibrium and their less equilibrium principle would come in, come up. So, the reaction would always go this way. Okay. So, that time what would be the situation? that situation we have to look at and in order to understand that situation for the open system we have to make use of mixed potential theory now if we try to look at two individual processes separately it will have its anodic and cathodic zones. So, this would be I naught for zinc and this is definitely on zinc surface and this is E equilibrium of zinc right and this is I A, this is I C. This is for this particular single redox process and then the other redox process that is basically same way we can plot and that basic equation is so when it is anodic polarization you simply use a as a subscript and when it is cathodic polarization you use c as a subscript okay so now this is the tafel equation and that tafel equations are plotted here so this is ia this is I C and I C the reaction is and here the reaction is two H plus. So here this redox reaction we are considering. Now here it is Now, this particular is E equilibrium hydrogen, this is I naught hydrogen and it has to happen on some metal surface and here it is zinc, so it has to be zinc. Okay. Now, 
this particular potential equilibrium potential will be decided as well as this potential will be decided by the zinc ion that is present there. At least this particular part I can write Nernst equation and if we talk about reduction ox by red concentration of ox. So, here this is my ox. So, H plus ion concentration over 2 power to the power 2 and H 2 and this is gas pH 2. So, if we consider this is to be 1 atmosphere. So, then I and this value if it is 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere so, this value goes to 0. So, this E naught value for hydrogen reduction process this is equal to 0 and this 2, 2 would get cancelled and finally, if you do R is equal to 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin into T is 298 into 2.303 if we convert. So, let us write this, this is 0. So, this term if we try to calculate, so this will be 8.314 into 298 divided by 96500 into 2.303 log of H plus ion concentration, fine. So, this becomes equal to. Now, if I multiply this, you will get roughly to be 0 0.059 and lo minus log of H plus ion is nothing but pH. So, I can write pH. So, E nor E equilibrium. So, this is the value of equilibrium for 2 H plus plus hydrogen equal to minus of this. So, depending on the pH of that acid solution, I will decide this value. Okay. And depending on the zinc electrode, let us say once you deep on zinc electrode in a hydrogen uh, this HCl medium, it will develop its potential by developing a double layer. Okay. So, that time the potential let us assume that that potential is corresponding to around 0 0.76 volt which is which happens when it is that zinc ion to be maintained at 1, one mole. Okay. So, our activity to be 1 which is not possible here because zinc is dissolving, but it will develop some potential. Now, as per our understanding let us say this pH to be kept at uh, 0. So, then this potential equilibrium potential also will be 0 volt okay, which is equal to uh, standard reduction potential for hydrogen, hydrogen reaction. Now, if we try to combine this as per mixed potential theory what we say There could be multiple number of cathodic and anodic process, multiple redox reactions ok. Second is the system would try to attain mixed potential by polarization. and this will be in situ polarization, we are not sending any current, it will happen automatically there uh, simultaneously spontaneously there. Sorry, I, I should mention that word spontaneously because that spontaneous spontaneity comes from the change in free energy which is negative here. Third is at mixed potential the rate of or rather total rate of 
cathodic reaction equal to total rate of anodic reaction or other way it talks about charge conservation. Fine. Okay. So, when we have this then let us put it so these two reaction two individual redox process we have a, we have plotted. Okay. Now, if we try to plot it on a single plot So, this is log i and let us say instead of potential let us put uh, instead of over voltage let us put potential. Okay. Now, we know hydrogen is here which is E equilibrium which is 0 and I 0 is here let us say hydrogen on zinc surface and if it is 0 volt and we have assumed that over zinc that zinc that potential sorry there should be a minus sign minus 0 0.76 volt for that reduction potential standard reduction potential for zinc. So, this will be lying here which is E equilibrium for zinc and let us say this is I 0 of zinc on zinc. Okay. So, they are having their own Tafel plots. Just like what we have done here. So, these two are put up here. Now, system has to achieve a mixed potential where the total total rate of cathodic reaction should be equal to the total rate of anodic reactions. And here we have two cathodic reactions and two anodic reactions. And in order to maintain that mixed potential it has to again I am requesting uh, whoever wants to understand this mixed potential please go back and see earlier lecture series. So, they will try to achieve a potential by extension of anodic part and extension of cathodic part. So, here they will meet and this point will be the E mix or it can be called as E corrosion fine. And that time this particular current density corresponds to I cor. And interestingly you see at this point we are actually crossing two current densities and corresponding to two different reactions. In this case if we consider in this case if we consider this point corresponds to the current densities for anodic and cathodic processes for the same species hydrogen. Okay. Of course, we are having hydrogen ion and hydrogen molecule, but it is the same species, but here also the same condition here also the same condition okay, zinc and zinc ion, but here we are having this corresponds to I C for this reduction process and this corresponds to I A for in 2 plus. So, now if we leave the system, the system would try to reach to this point where the rate of cathodic process is equal to rate of anodic process. Since I C and I A they corresponding to rate and you see at this point both are equal. So, we are taking a mod because I am considering I C to be negative current. So, the magnitude wise both are equal and if we add them, so these two electrons are getting cancelled, so the charge conservation is maintained. And here we are talking about two redox processes, there could be multiple redox processes, we will see that. Okay. So, now in this case the system would definitely would go to this point, 
this point it will go and stay there. Okay. So, that is basically the current potential corresponding to the steady state potential. This is not equilibrium potential. If we open it, then definitely the equilibrium would be broken and the reaction would always go to the forward direction and hydrogen will be evolved and zinc will be dissolved. Okay. So, that is what we call it a steady state potential or corrosion potential. Now, when you try to protect zinc, let us say I would like to protect zinc, I do not want to allow this corrosion corrosion of zinc in, in HCl, then how can we do it? For, the, for that, again we can actually make use of the principle what we have discussed. So, if we, we can go to the cathodic side, let us see. Now, here the cathodic side, again polarization we have to do. So, the polarization in order to reach this point, we had to see the polarization happening on the hydrogen part as well as zinc part. The hydrogen is actually having cathodic polarization from the equilibrium potential and zinc is having anodic polarization from the equilibrium potential of its equilibrium potential which is minus 0 0.76 volt and it is reaching in between some potential where the both the current densities are becoming equal and charge balance is maintained or charge conservation is maintained. Now, now the system would try to maintain this E core or E mix. So, now if we want to find out what should be my polarization or from which reference potential I should see the polarization, that reference potential should be E mix. In case of single redox process, we used E equilibrium to be my reference potential for, for seeing the polarization to happen. Okay? But here my polarization would be considered with reference to E mix or E core. So, this is my potential which we have to consider from the beginning and then that particular potential if we have to see whether we can go up or down. Now, as we go up, let us say I consider that I can go up. How I can go up? I can send positive current or I A to the zinc from external source and I can take it to the positive direction. So, I can take the potential here and when I take the potential here, interesting observation is though the hydrogen evolution rate is going down because the current density corresponding to hydrogen evolution which is IC is going down correspond co as compared to the current density at E core which is this fine. So, that means hydrogen evolution rate would reduce, but interestingly I could see that the rate of zinc dissolution which is I A this is let us say I prime and let us say E prime this I prime is more than the I A corresponding to I core or corresponding to that potential point which is E core. So, now in this case definitely if I go on the positive side, I would definitely increase my corrosion rate in the form of increase in I A. So, how can we reduce I A? Because this I core is nothing but I A, okay, which is the dissolution current density. Now, I could see that the current density this corresponding to I A can reduce if we follow this line. Okay. Now, that can be followed if we take the potential downwards from this reference potential. So, polarization is nothing but the change in potential from reference potential or steady potential. This is my steady potential in case of actual corrosion event, but in case of single redox process E equilibrium was my steady potential. So, now here also I am taking the potential downwards with respect to the steady potential or E mix. Again I am actually having cathodic polarization. So, the potential is dropped to this place let us say. So, this is let us say new potential or E double prime. Let us see how much is my cathodic over voltage. So, here cathodic over voltage would be this much. this much would be cathodic over voltage and what will be my corresponding cathodic current density? This is my I C double prime. What will be my corresponding anodic current density? This will be my I A double prime. So, now if I can take the potential to this E double prime by having this uh, uh, over voltage of this amount. I could see that I A double prime is very, very less as compared to 
I core and then definitely my corrosion rate or dissolution rate would go down. Now this dissolution rate is going down because of what? Because of the because of cathodic polarization or because of sending negative current to zinc. Okay? So then I definitely I take the potential down from that E core and then I can experience a very very low corrosion rate compared to the rate of zinc dissolution when the potential was at E core. Okay? So, this is also happening in case of real corrosion system that cathodic polarization or decrease in IA. And this also happens if we do send negative current to zinc. Now, how can we send negative current? So, the if we leave zinc in HCl open atmosphere, then the potential it will be E core more or less that E core will be maintained. So, then how can we actually take the potential down so that I can have less IA? That can be possible if we do two processes. First process is if we can, ha can have an external power source. Let us see what happens if we have external power source. Let us say this is my zinc and this is HCl this is HCl, this is zinc, this is HCl. So, initially we have hydrogen bubble formation and zinc is dissolving. So, zinc will gradually dissolve and it will be eaten away. Now, if I let us say have some auxiliary electrode, let us say graphite or let us say uh, platinum. And then or I can have something like high silicon 16 to 18 percent silicon steel. Okay. So, those are called auxiliary anode. So, now I connect this to because I have to send negative current or electron to this place. So, I can do that if I connect it to a negative terminal of a DC source, let us say battery and the positive terminal to this particular end. Okay. So, now current flows this way, electron flows this way, electron comes over here and then it actually facilitates cathodic reaction. So, there will be a vigorous hydrogen evolution on the zinc surface compared to the no current situation. But on the way zinc will be protected because by that way because we send current then the potential is dropped here and then correspondingly Ia has reduced from this to this. Okay. So, that way I can prevent the corrosion rate by prevent dissolution of zinc or excessive dissolution of zinc. This is one way of protecting it or one way of taking the potential of zinc down okay, and having this polarization happening which is cathodic polarization and we can have protection. So, this particular method connecting it to DC power source and then allowing the zinc electrode or the zinc metal to have access to extra electron we call it as impressed current cathodic protection. or ICCP. Now, you see we are actually forcefully sending electron from outside source to the zinc because I want to protect zinc. Now, coming to this graphite or auxiliary, why it is auxiliary anode? Now, when we send electron there, 
So, that means the current is flowing this way. So, that means anodic reaction would happen on this graphite surface. So, now if we use some metal like let us say magnesium, then magnesium would actually uh, would go into dissolution, a serious dissolution because manganese is way below zinc in HCl uh, if you compare the galvanic series. So, magnesium will dissolve quickly and finally, it will not have any possibility of holding that electrode. That electrode should be having a very, very minimal corrosion rate so that this particular circuit can continue for a long period of time. So, the dissolution rate, rate of that particular electrode should be as low as possible and it only completes the circuit. Okay? And as we know that if electron flows this way, so the current flows that way and the, through the electrolyte current actually leaving the anode surface and it is coming to cathode surface. The current is actually electrical current is entering into the cathode surface which is zinc because zinc is connected to negative terminal. So, this is cathode, but here sign is negative, sign is negative, but it is cathode because cathodic reaction is going on. Here the sign is positive, but it is anode because anodic reaction is going on there, but not dissolution of graphite or high silicon steel. Some other reduction process can happen, or oxidation process can happen there, but on the cathode we are actually having cathodic reaction, that is what it is cathode. So, now current is entering through the electrolyte into the cathode. So, two ways to understand this. One way is if we can send electron to the zinc, then of course, we can make it cathode. Other way is we have to see whether the current is electrical current is entering into the electrode or the metal which one I have to protect. So, then also I can have a good amount of protection there. So, now in addition to this, we can add two more conditions. current leaves anode and enters cathode which is metal to be protected then reduces greatly. So, this is also part of cathodic protection because we are sending electron to the zinc connecting it to cathodic end of the metal of that battery and we are making it cathode and then the circuit is complete because of the auxiliary electrode and remember auxiliary electrode dissolution rate it self dissolution rate would be very minimal. Okay. So, we will talk about auxiliary electrode later on, but at this moment this auxiliary electrode is supporting as the completion of circuit. Okay. And uh, some other oxidation reaction can happen on that aux aux auxiliary electrode. Okay. Now, so that means when we are actually doing cathodic protection, we are actually taking the potential down, we are actually taking the, we are actually uh, uh, influencing the potential of zinc by considering cathodic polarization, we are sending electron or, or cathodic uh, current to the zinc and at the same time current is entering into the cathode and here one part is to be mentioned entering into the cathode in the electrolyte. This is in electrolyte. Okay. So, Finally, if we try to conclude today's lecture, the cathodic protection can happen if we have cathodic polarization, cathodic polar protection can happen if we can make the metal to be protected as cathode, cathodic protection can happen if we send negative current to the metal and at the same time if we see the current through the electrolyte enters into cathode or the metal which then that metal will be protected. Okay. So, these are 
uh, the features of cathodic protection. Now, here we talked about impressed current cathodic protection. Okay. So, where we are using external source, DC source, but many a times we look into sacrificial anode effect like uh, 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 galvanization. So, where we coat zinc over, over steel and we see that steel is protected. Okay. So, that sacrificial anode effect though it is termed as sacrificial anode and we will see that there also we are actually doing cathodic polarization and we are trying to make the metal which is to be protected using sacrificial anode as cathode. Okay. So, we will understand that part in our next lecture. So, next lecture our discussion point would be the understanding of cathodic protection using sacrificial anode and associated polarization effect. Okay. Till then, thank you very much.